everyone that's joining me on tonight, you are welcome. This is Prophetic Insights, and I am Anna Edwards. I send you tons of peace, love, and prosperity as you enter into the prayer room tonight. I want you to enter into worship. Enter into an atmosphere of miracles. Your miracle is in the prayer room on tonight. Enter into worship. Receive grace. Those of you that need strength, receive strength. As you enter in, as you enter in, grace is extended to you. Strength is extended to you. Mercy is extended to you. Whatever you need is at the altar tonight. Receive grace, receive strength, receive mercy on your life tonight. As you enter in, let's share the broadcast as we worship the Lord with this song. Worthy is the Lamb. Man of God, woman of God, 
sisters, brothers, child of God, prophet of God, receive grace tonight. Grace is the unmerited favor of God on our lives. And that's a free gift from the Holy Spirit. I want you to receive grace. Receive grace to make it another day. Receive grace to make it through your next level, your next leg of life, your next chapter. Receive grace. Grace is at the altar. Receive grace. Do you need grace for sons and daughters tonight? Begin to receive grace on their behalf. Grace has come. Grace has come. It is the anointing of God that cleans up a man and transforms his life. Grace has come. Grace. Grace comes to lift the heavy burdens and break the yokes and set the captives free. I know what I'm telling you. Grace is at the altar. Grace is being released into your house tonight. Grace is being released over your sons, your daughters. It doesn't matter how deep you have fallen into a pit. Grace will lift you up. Grace is here to take you out. Grace is here to elevate you, to lift you up of the low places and to set you in places with kings and priests. Grace, grace, grace. Grace is here. There are so many angels being released right now in this atmosphere. I see angels released being entering into your houses of prayer. Angels of grace has come. And the Spirit of the Lord is just releasing grace over houses of prayer, over covenant people, over sons, over daughters. Grace to make it. You will make it. You will make it. I want you to declare that tonight. I will make it. I will make it. As long as there is life, there is hope. I came to give someone hope tonight to let you know you will make it. You will make it through another day. You will make it through another week. You will make it through another month. You will make it because the people of God are praying for you. I'm here every week praying, standing in prayer for you. You will make it. Grace is available for you tonight. And just in case no one told you that they loved you recently, I want you to know Yeshua loves you and I love you. I'm here for you, standing in prayer, standing in intercession. You will make it. I came to push someone into their prophetic Goshen tonight. What is prophetic Goshen? The prophetic Goshen is the place of covenant. It's the place of peace. It's the place of provision. And it's the place of prosperity for the people of God. Do I have any Yeshua lovers in the house? To everyone that loves the Lord, you love Yeshua. Um, we're, we're rejoicing in our prophetic oceans. Can nobody steal my joy, beloved? Can nobody steal my joy? I'm baptized in the joy of the Lord. The presence of God is here. The anointing of God is here. The grace of God is here. The richness of God is here. The elevation of God is here. The promotion of God is here. Whatever you need from the Lord, it's at the altar of prayer. The place of miracles is where you come to receive your miracles. Hey. The heavens are open over the praying church. The heavens are open over world harvest. And I'm telling you, Jubilee rains are falling. Receive your portion. Receive your portion. The Spirit of the Lord is here. Let's worship. This is prophetic insights. And I've got the word of the Lord coming to you. Let's worship the Lord.
addictions. Let the Lord do it. Let the Lord do it. of God. We have built our altars 
of thanksgiving and worship unto the Lord. Last Saturday, the instructions came that we were to bring our candles and bring our offerings and bring everything else that the Lord laid on our heart to bring. And I'm here tonight to let you know, we have built our altars. We have lifted up holy hands unto the Lord through the power of the Holy Spirit. And we have decreed and declared our, our new season. And our new season is open. Our prophetic Goshen is now. We are living in our prophetic Goshen. The season is open and it's happening right now. What is your prophetic Goshen? Your, your Goshen represents a place of comfort and plenty. Comfort and plenty. I want someone to write that down. My prophetic Goshen is my place of comfort and plenty. Comfort and plenty. I know some people, some people have been in bondage for so long that when we begin to talk about comfort and, and prosperity, they just, their mind cannot receive it, but that's okay. Chains are breaking even right now. But for the covenant people that understand how God blesses the righteous, you're coming into a place of comfort and plenty. Comfort and plenty. And so, in this time and in this dispensation, covenant saints of God, the covenant people of God, we understand what God is doing. The Lord has set us up for the for the seven years, the coming seven years. The Lord is taking care of us. The Lord is anointing us. The Lord is preparing us and giving us all what we need to be able to survive in the next seven years. I gave you all the definitions of what is happening with the seven year cycle. And just in case, just in case someone missed that, I want you to understand in the month of September, we will be entering into a new seven year cycle. And that seven year cycle begins September 2022 on Rosh Hashanah and it's going to take us all the way to September 2029. God works in cycles of seven. And so as we move into this new prophetic seven year cycle, the Lord is taking covenant people and setting them up in their prophetic Goshen's. It's a place of plenty, it's a place of comfort, it's a place of peace, it's a place of provision, and it's a place of prosperity. Covenant people should never make an apology for, uh, for their prophetic Goshen. You, you cannot try to dumb it down. You just have to celebrate God's goodness and His mercy and His favor towards you in your prophetic Goshen. It's part of your covenant inheritance. So tonight I have three prophetic promises that you can begin to expect as you begin to advance into this new season of your life. Three prophetic promises. That's the insight. That's the prophetic insight coming to you tonight. Number one, prophetic promise number one, you are going to live a drama free life a drama free life that's prophetic promise number one now for some people some people may understand this and some people just may not be able to get it but for, for people that understand what it means to be in a place of peace and shalom and then have that place of peace disturbed you will understand the value of this promise. This is a peace that is going to surpass your understanding. This is a peace that covenant people need in order to be able to complete their end time assignments. You need the peace of God. You need the peace of the Messiah that surpasses all understanding. It's, a, it's called, and I like to call it, a drama free life you're coming into a season where the Lord is sending you into 
your prophetic Goshen and it's going to be a place, a drama free life. Remember, you fought all your battles to get to this place. You went through hardships, you went through trials, you went through tribulations, you went through ups, through downs, through challenges, through the storms of life. And now that you are in this prophetic Goshen, the last thing you need is contentious people around you. The last thing you need is confusion and contention and, and the spirit of bacchanalia in your prophetic Goshen. So as I was praying concerning the promises of God in our prophetic Goshen, this is what the Lord said. You are coming into a place where you are going to live a drama-free life. Now, now, if you are the person that is makes the drama and you are the Confucius person, your hour of deliverance has come. Just in case you are the contentious one. Okay, but I believe I'm talking to God-fearing holy men and holy women of God. All right, so this is the season that the Lord is bringing you into your prophetic Goshen and he's leaving the confusion makers outside. Someone write that down. He is leaving the confusion and contention makers outside because in the promises of God, one of the major promises of God to covenant people, right, is peace. What are the promises of God? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Someone write that down. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God, right? And so in the inside of this prophetic Goshen, we're inside of our, we are inside of our prophetic places now. We're on the mountain of Goshen. We are Goshen people around here. We are people that are, are dwelling richly in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Because that is the kingdom of God. So if you are a drama maker, a confusion maker, a contention maker, the, the, your placement is not in the Goshen. So people of God, under the sound of my voice, I want you to understand your next level. Your next level in life, this chapter of your life, the, these upcoming seven years, the Lord wants you to understand you are, you are to live a drama-free life. What kind of life? A drama-free life. I got peace when I wake up. I got peace when I move about my day and I got peace when I lay down at night. Don't you be bringing no contention around me. Don't you be bringing no confusion around me. I choose to live a drama free life. And so as you begin to pray in this new season of your life, this is what the Lord said to tell you. Begin to bind the spirit that is released to steal your peace. Because this is one of the strategies of the devil in the last days against the covenant people. He cannot really throw you off a of focus. He cannot really steal your blessings unless you open a, a door. But we are protective around here. But he can try to mess with your peace. He can try to send in fiery darts of uh, that it's like a demonic firefly. It's like a demonic firefly that is assigned to come into you, to, to come against your mind, to steal your peace. And so you got to pray against that spirit. Watch for that spirit. Whatever can mess with your mind, messes with your peace. Have you ever noticed that if you are in a place of uh, consecration and you're praying and you're fasting and you are at peace and shalom with the Lord and then all of a sudden you get a bad phone call or someone comes around you with a wrong spirit or wrong attitude or something and it, it, it messes up your mind, it messes up your focus, it messes up your your attention to the things of the Lord, to the things that you were working on because whatever can mess with your mind messes with your peace and that's the, 
that's what the demonic fiery flies comes to do it comes to mess with your mind if they can mess with your mind it can mess with your peace and so this is why you got to be very careful who you entertain what phone calls you take uh, people that you 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 travel with and you have close to you in this season because you do not want to have that spirit coming at you and messing with your mind i'm telling you if i ask any one of my ministers to prepare a sermon and uh, come out and preach the word of god if they have contentious people confucius people around them it's going to mess with their mind and they may say apostle it's difficult for me to concentrate people around me are doing this or quarreling or doing that whatever messes with your mind messes with your peace and so this is the spirit that we are praying against this is the spirit that we are breaking we are breaking the neck of that devil we are breaking the neck of all these confucius little minions these little devils that has come to try to steal your peace no we say no more we are binding and destroying every spirit of contention not in this season not in this hour not in this dispensation you don't know what i went through to get to my prophetic goal I went through the fire. I went through the flood. I went through humiliation. I went through persecution. I went through people talking about me like a low down dirty dog. And now that I'm in my prophetic Goshen, here you come, you want to come dragging yourself behind. No, no, no. You're going to stay on the outside. No, no, no. No more spirits of contention. No more spirits of oppression. No more spirits of confusion. We're not taking that. I say no, no more, no more. We break the powers of darkness coming against the life of God's people in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm breaking it. I'm breaking it. I'm breaking it. I'm breaking it. Whatever messes with your mind messes with your peace it messes with your shalom no matter how much you try to get back into shalom it, sometimes you cannot as long as that spirit comes and begins to mess with your mind it's almost as though the atmosphere changes and so you gotta pray against that spirit you gotta put up strong walls in your prophetic ocean you are not going back to no kind of bitterness no kind of contention i'm telling you no we're not taking it we're not going back i want nothing come around to confuse my mind to confuse my thoughts if you got a funny spirit keep that funny spirit on the outside my walls are fortified in the prophetic ocean i'm telling you i know what i'm telling you that's the mindset you gotta have when it comes knocking at your door ring 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 who's there it's me bitterness bitterness don't live here no more hang up boom ring 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 who's on the other line it's me confusion no 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 i say no more no more you're not coming in there's no access that's right shelly fireproof your house ring 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 who's there it's me bitterness bitterness don't live here no more i'm sorry i'm sorry ring 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 Ooh, hello who's this it's me unforgiveness unforgiveness don't live here no more hang up the call no we are not going back around the mountain in those depressing cycles cycles of bitterness must be broken completely cycles of unforgiveness cycles of depression cycles of addiction no beloved fireproof your mind fireproof your house fireproof your thoughts put on the helmet of god which is the word of the sal the helmet of salvation you got to put on that helmet and ensure that that helmet is on because you do not want to go back around the mountain and bitterness is coming in unforgiveness is following you into goshen no they're not coming they're not following me i want no part to play with bitterness or unforgiveness contention confusion depression oppression addictions no 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 you're not following there's no room in the house for you so you've got to purpose in your heart not to allow the devil to steal your peace right 
you, you, you are choosing to live a drama-free life. This is your first prophetic promise. You're going to live a drama-free life. And I do have a portion of scripture that I want to bless you with. Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Be careful for nothing. So you understand now? You got to be careful for nothing because there are some... There are some devils, they just hate to see covenant people happy. Because they are down and oppressed and depressed, they're going to come. They're going to try to come to see how best they can steal your joy and steal your peace. But I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Be careful for nothing. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds through our Lord Yeshua. So that's a very powerful portion of scripture and it's going to help you to guard your mind, guard your thoughts and guard your life in this new season. Do you know, I know of some people, they have everything in life, they're very blessed and when they lay down at night they cannot sleep because they are tormented by tormenting devils that come to steal their peace. That's a spirit, that's a devil, and that's, a, that's bondage. So in this place of prophetic Goshen, right? We, we have peace, we have provision, we have prosperity. And so we've got to protect it because you want to be able to enjoy your blessings. You've got to be able to enjoy uh, your season, your new season of life. So I'm choosing to live a drama-free life. I'm choosing to live a drama-free life. That's the promise of God, a drama-free life. And I can guarantee you, the older woman, elder woman, uh, the mothers of Zion, um, the more mature people of God will understand the importance of living a drama-free life. Younger people, I tend to find that sometimes younger people love drama because they like attention. They like to be the center of attraction. With confusion and drama but if you're a young person I'm encouraging you lay hold of this promise tonight live a drama free life it preserves your youth it preserves your body your mind is just at rest and at peace you're in Shalom most of the time Shalom is all around you you are kinder when you live a drama-free life. You are a kind person. You tend to treat others with kindness and love. And uh, you, you don't have bitterness and unforgiveness in your heart when you live a drama-free life. Okay? So for the younger folks, I'm encouraging you. Live a drama-free life. For the more mature people, you already know this is gold, right? This is like gold. Living a drama-free life is gold. It's gold that no money can buy. It's gold that no earthly money can buy. No earthly money can buy you a drama-free life. It's only the Spirit of the Lord. That's why the Bible says, Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That is the Kingdom of God. So tonight, I release the prophetic promise of Shalom into your life. I just release drama-free living into your life. I release that anointing to live in the peace of the Messiah. I release that anointing. I release that anointing over your home, over your spouse. I decree over your life a drama-free life with your spouse. I speak shalom into your marriage that there will be no confusion in the marriage no contention, no arguments. It's a demon. It's a demon. I'm telling you, it's a devil. I just bind every spirit, every little minion spirit, every little midget spirit that has been assigned to your marriage to bring contention and confusion. I break it now. I break it. I break it. I break it. I break the neck of it now. In the mighty name of our Lord Yeshua. And I command it to go. I command that devil to leave your house. I command that spirit to leave your house. I command that spirit to leave your marriage. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
go in the mighty name of Jesus. Every contention spirit trying to enter into your home to cause confusion in the home, in the family home, always quarreling, confusion. The family home is just, it's like a war zone. Someone under the sound of my voice, I just bind that spirit. I bind that devil right now. I bind it. I bind it in chains of the blood of Yeshua. I break the neck of that devil and I cast it out. I command it to go in the name of Yeshua. I send the Holy Spirit. I send the Holy Spirit. I send the Holy Spirit right now into your house. And I release shalom, shalom, shalom in your bedroom, shalom in your living rooms, shalom at your prayer altars, shalom in your garages, shalom in the basement, shalom at the front door, shalom at the back door. I release shalom, peace, 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 peace that surpasses all understanding, peace in your kitchen as you are cooking your meals. I decree and declare peace. Peace that surpasses all understanding be released on your life now. Peace. Peace that surpasses all understanding. So we are living a drama free life. Father, even now I just pray for family members that this anointing will reach them somewhere, somehow, and that every person will take personal responsibility for living a drama-free life. Every person, every person, every person, every person, a drama-free life. I'm coming on to point number two, but I'm telling you, this particular promise, it is the promise of the Lord. Do you know why Messianic people light up their Shabbat candles on a Friday evening? Because the Shabbat candles carries the power of Shalom. When we light up our prayer candles on the Friday evening, we welcome in the Shabbat. We welcome in the Shalom of the Lord into the house and we prophetically announce the blessing of rest for our souls. The Shabbat is rest for your souls, divine justice for your souls. You have to begin to understand the power of the rest for your souls. Some people just cannot rest. They cannot rest. They're like busy bodies, busy bodies. They just have to be talking, talking, talking and trying to stir up things all the time. And that's when a person does not understand the power of rest, shalom and rest. There is a supernatural anointing that rests and abides in the houses of people that understand how to enter into the supernatural rest of the Lord. All right? And so... God worked on six days and he rested on the seventh day because he understood that if he was going to work, 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 tire out himself, he was going to become an angry God. <laughs> That's just my take on it. When you're working, 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 busying, busying, busying yourself, always doing, 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 and there's no time for divine justice for your souls, you are unable to process things in life and... Uh, you know, sometimes things just get out of hand. So peace has come. It's a peace that surpasses all understanding. It's the shalom of God. In this place of your prophetic Goshen, you're going to become a peaceful woman. You're going to become a peaceful man. People are going to look at you and they're going to say, wow, you are so different now. Or they may say, every time I talk to you, I feel peace. I feel a peace come upon my spirit. And that's who you want to become. So just in case you are not there as yet, it's fine. But purpose in your heart to become a man of peace or a woman of peace. When you are a man of peace or a woman of peace, I'm telling you, every 
everybody knows it. Everybody know that from, from the time they call you and they talk to you over the phone, peace enters into their spirit. Shalom comes upon them. And their spirit man rest in the Lord. In my life, I rest in Yeshua. I am in my sabbatical year. This is the last year of a, a seven year cycle that's closing. It's a sabbatical year. And I am in my place of shalom and rest. I am resting in God. This is what the Lord said to me. Anna, in this sabbatic, sabbatical year, I want you to rest in me. Rest in my finished work. Rest in my love. Rest in my anointing. Rest in my grace. Rest in my finished work. Because it is finished. Before the foundations of the earth, the work was complete. And so, this is what the Lord have asked me to do. My future is already written in a heavenly book. And all I am required to do is walk it out. Rest in the Lord. So I work. I do my work. I labor for the Lord. But I labor from a rested place in God. From a rested place. From a seated place. We are seated in heavenly places with the Messiah. Kingdom people. Do I got any kingdom people in the house? I want you to say, I am a woman of shalom. If you're a man, I want you to declare that on your life. I am a man of shalom. 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 Decree and declare that. I'm a man of shalom. I'm a, oh, I'm a woman of shalom. Yeah. And I'm bring, that brings me to prophetic promise number two. I'm giving you prophetic promise number two. But that one, that was the one of the major promises. One of the major promises. I'm a woman of shalom. Prophetic promise number two is coming in. I agree with you, Sherry. I agree with you, Minister Junet. I agree with you, Glennis, a woman of shalom. I agree with you, Patricia. You're a woman of shalom. Eleanor, I agree. Pastor Merlin, I agree with you. Pastor Cheryl, I agree. Kathy, I agree. Minister Lystra, I agree. I'm coming into agreement with your declarations. Roseanne, I agree. Kathleen, I agree. Diane, I agree with you. Gail, I'm agreeing with you. Rochelle, I agree with you. Camille Day, I agree with you. You're a woman of shalom. Wickham, I agree with you. You are a woman of shalom. Minister LaShawn, I agree with you. I agree with you. Abdiel, you're a man of shalom. I agree with you. You're a man of shalom. Shalom. Wherever you go, Abdiel, shalom will begin to flow out of your spirit. Because that's the Jew. That's what the Jewish men bring. They bring shalom everywhere they go. So you're a man of shalom. Janet, you're a woman of shalom. Shanti, you're a woman of shalom. Lazar, you're a woman of shalom. Shalom, that's shalom. People will feel it. People will sense it. They will know that something different is on your life. They may not be able to explain it, but they will know that when they enter into your presence, there is something different about your life. Shalom. Shelly, you're a woman of shalom. Chandra, you're a woman of shalom. Diane, your husband, Yemen. Raleigh is a man of shalom. That's right. Adele and Veronica, your people of shalom. Laura Ann, you're a woman of shalom. As you are writing those declarations, something is breaking off of your life, off of your past, off of your house, and shalom is entering in. We are setting up our prophetic Goshen's according to the prophetic promise. You got to set up your Goshen. You got to set up your structures with prophetic decrees. I am a woman of shalom. And so shalom is your portion. Prophetic promise number two, prodigals are coming to their senses. Now in this season of the Goshen, we are in our prophetic Goshens. It's a place of peace. It's a place of prosperity. It's a place of provision. Pro 
prodigal sons, prodigal daughters, prodigal husbands, prodigal wives that that was somewhat losing their minds, their senses are coming back. The prodigal son, the prodigal daughter, the prodigal husband, the prodigal wife, their senses are coming back and they're going to begin to catch themselves again before this seven year cycle begins. The prodigal son in the book of Luke chapter 15, we're going to read it in a bit. He took all of his inheritance from his father he was busy to get his inheritance and he said dad I need my inheritance I'm ready to go I'm ready to make a move give me my portion and the father being so so loving to his son he said okay he divided up the property he gave one son half and he gave the other son his uh, half of the property the prodigal son sold his portion took all the money and left the father's covering and uh, went out into some other part of um, some other place and he began what they call it reckless living so the prodigal son began to engage in reckless living right thank you minister parisia your computer is down so you can't put up the scriptures okay thank you so much well abdiel is here i'm sure abdiel could put up that scripture for me Abdiel, the portion of scripture is Luke 15, 11 to 24. <laughs> I don't know if you could take that portfolio. But the portion of scripture for the prodigal son is Luke chapter 15, 11 to, 11 to 24. So the prodigal son took all the money, took all the inheritance, and he began to engage in reckless living, right? He said, you know what, dad? I'm sorry, but I need my inheritance. Give me my portion right now. I'm out of here. I want to go out and drink. I want to go out and womanize. I want to go out and gamble. I just want to go out and live my life. You don't understand. Father, you don't understand. Ma Mommy, you don't understand. I'm young. I want to live my life. Just give me some room. Let me live my life. And so he took his inheritance and he went out and he began to live a reckless life and he got himself into a lot of trouble uh, until the point that he ended up having to go and work for a man in um, someone who was rich in the pigs in the pig dens so the man sent him to work in the pig dens in the pig styes, and he became so hungry he had no money he had no food and the point the Bible says he was so hungry that he felt like he could eat the pigs food because he was so hungry and um, it is in that moment that he was hungry and he was suffering and struggling oh there you go thank you so much Abdiel well done receive your promotion tonight Abdiel blessings upon you something has happened on your life receive it a man of shalom has given us the word of God tonight Luke chapter 15 11 to 24 so it's on the screen so I'm telling you in the pigs in the pig den, he was so hungry <laughs> minister praise you. <laughs> you helped him that's what a mommy is there for <laughs> so in the pig den, um, he was so hungry he said I, I think I could eat the pigs food and it is in that low place in his life that he came to himself and he said you know what I am sure my father is eating well I'm sure the servants in my father's house is eating better than me why am I in this low place I should be under my father's covering I should be back at my father's home working for my dad helping my dad what am I doing what am I thinking why did I bring myself to this low place? Why did I go? Why did I take myself out of the covering? Why did I go back to drinking? Why did I go back to womanizing? Why did I go back to smoking, gambling, the pleasures of life? Why am I committing adultery? What's wrong with me? Why did I curse my wife out? Why did I curse my, my husband out? What's going on with me? And he came to his senses. Someone say he came to his senses. He came to his senses in the lowest place of his life. Oh, 
Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. He came to his senses. And so, this is what the Bible says. And not many days after, the young son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. I'm reading Luke ch chapter 15, I'm on verse 13. And there he wasted his substance with riotous living or reckless living. And he went and he spent it all. And then there came a mighty famine in the land. And he began to be in want. He went, joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he was sent to work in the fields with the swine. He was so faint and so hungry that he felt that he could eat the husk that was given to the swine. And no man gave him anything. This is what I want you to understand. People of God, you got to hear the word of the Lord now. In this prophetic Goshen, the Lord wants to cover you and your entire household. You and your sons, you and your daughters, your nieces, your nephews, your grandchildren, your, your husbands, your wife. God wants to cover the entire family family because of what is coming upon the earth there is famines that is coming global food shortages are coming the stock market is shaking right now you better brace yourself for an economic downturn right storm more of the storms the hurricanes tsunamis snowstorms earthquakes in diverse places it's coming and the spirit of the lord wants to cover the entire family the entire family got to be covered and so this is what happened to the prodigal son he said listen a famine is coming i'm just uh, quoting it now a famine is coming I'm out of my father's covering. I pull myself out. Now I'm hungry. There is no word. There is no anointing on me. There is nothing. No one to strengthen me. No one to uplift me. No one to give me anything. This is what the Bible says. No one gave him anything. And he came to his senses. He woke up one day and he, re he realized, wait a minute. I was playing the fool. I was cursing the very hand that feeds me. I was, I was coming against the very one that loved me. I was coming against the very one that protects me. I was coming against my auntie. I was coming against my uncle. I was coming against my wife. For what? For what? Why was I doing this? I was coming against my, my mother. Why was I doing this? It's a spirit. It's a spirit that is a sign to break the family apart. But I'm here tonight to let you know the spirit of the Lord is breaking that curse. The spirit of the Lord is breaking that curse against your life, against your son, against your daughter, against your spouse. The spirit of the Lord is breaking the strongholds and the prodigals is coming back to their senses and so he said you know what I'm going to go back to my father's house and I'm going to ask him for forgiveness verse 17 and when he came to his senses he said look at how many hired servants are in my father's house and they have bread to eat enough to spare and I am perishing here with hunger what in the world was wrong with me Everything I need was at my father's house. Everything I need is under the covering. Everything I need is in the prophetic Goshen. Where am I going? I'm going to go back and ask for my father's forgiveness. And I'm going to ask him to forgive me and to take me in again. And listen to this. This word is for you. Mothers, fathers, wives, if your husbands are being mean to you. Um... This is what the Lord wants you to do. The Lord wants you to have mercy and give compassion and receive them back again. Receive them back with greater love. This is what happened. When he came back and his father saw him, his father said, Bring the best robe and put it on him. 
put a ring on his hand, put shoes on his feet, kill the fatted calf, and let us eat and be merry, because my son was once dead, but now he is alive. And this is something to have a feast all, up, all for. And so, family, praying mommy, praying daddy, praying wives, the Lord wants you to have great compassion on your sons and on your daughters. If your spouse is the one being mean and being wicked to you, the Lord is saying to have compassion. Because the time is coming that the famine uh, is coming. The world is about to change. Everything is about to transform. And um, God wants the entire family covered and under divine covering. So God wants you to extend mercy. The prodigal son, his father extended mercy to him. Grace and mercy is needed more than ever in this season for uh, prodigals. So prodigals are coming home because they're coming to their senses. I don't know um, if any of you have noticed, but a lot of um, sons and daughters, nieces and nephews are coming back to the reality that backsliding is not the way. They are coming back to the, to the reality that the addictions is not the way. They know that they have made a, a wrong turn. And so God wants you to forgive them because our Heavenly Father loves, loves them and He forgives them. So you have to also forgive them and show them extra grace. This is the word I wrote for you. A, a measure of double grace and double mercy and double compassion is needed now. I don't know who who's that's for, but I just want you to understand what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. A measure of double grace double mercy and double compassion is needed now because they're coming back they're coming home they they know what they did they know the wrong they have done and they are sorry for it they are sorry for it this is what i am sensing they are sorry for the reckless living they are sorry for the drinking the smoking the womanizing sexual immoralities they are sorry for the gambling they're sorry for their cursing their evil words against you they're sorry for being mean and god is saying the prodigals are coming to their senses release double grace double mercy double compassion because even god god is a merciful god his mercies never fail his compassion never fails his grace never fails so i just begin to release double mercy upon everyone that needs double mercy i release double grace i release double compassion even right now double grace is released double mercy is released double compassion is released in the mighty name of jesus receive it receive it receive it double mercy double grace double compassion double mercy double grace double compassion i release that on your life even now to deal with your hard cases and your cases are going are not going to be hard anymore because you are in your prophetic goshen and the lord is going to give you the grace to deal with the people that you love the most and that are closest to you because the father the prodigal son's father really loved him and the prodigal son's father was so happy that his son came to his senses. That he said, kill the fattest calf. Put a robe on him. Put a ring on his finger. Put shoes on his feet. And let's have a feast. For my son was dead, but now he's alive. So I'll tell you this. As a mother, I can tell you, a lot of grace I release a lot of grace and a lot of mercy to my children because as parents we all want to see them uh, enjoying the blessings of God and living in the prophetic Goshen of the Lord just as we are living in the prophetic Goshen so I want you to always remember just as God is a good good father and he releases 
mercy to us when we needed mercy, so too he releases that mercy uh, to sons and daughters, nieces and nephews, even your spouses, right? So um, that's just for the prodigals, right? That's just for the prodigals, uh, persons that are closest to you, that you love dearly, you love your brothers, you love your sisters, and sometimes they can get you real angry. I, I know, I understand. There are some of them you have to keep them at an arm's length until the right time. But there are some that is anointed to be close to you and you are anointed to be close to them. So you just have to love them, love them and release that double grace, double mercy, double compassion. If you have a spouse and your spouse has been acting, acting crazy, double grace. Trust me, if they're acting up, just say, Lord, double grace. I release double grace. I'm telling you, this is your strategy. The minute you begin to speak that out in the atmosphere of your house, double grace comes. Say, Lord, this man, this man, this man, double grace, Lord, double mercy, Lord, double compassion. And I'm telling you, the situation begins to diffuse, right? So you want to have bowels of mercy, right, for your loved ones. Um, because it takes time for them to come into un an understanding of spiritual things. Not everyone is able to grasp spiritual things quickly. You and I, we went through our processing and now we are able to grasp spiritual things. But younger people, it takes time and you have to give them time. You have to give them mercy. You have to give them grace. You have to give them compassion, right? to grasp spiritual things so that's prophetic promise number two prodigals are coming to their senses and um, they're going to make you proud again your daughters are going to make you proud your sons are going to make you proud Shelly your son is going to make you proud I'm praying for you I'm standing in prayer for Ronald God is doing a total transformation on his life and you're going to see um, the glory of God shine on his life again Diane, I'm praying for your sons. Um, I'm praying for Isaiah. I'm praying for Roland. I'm praying for Dana and that Gabriella. The Spirit of the Lord is just going to pour fresh oils upon them as you release double grace, double mercy, double compassion. I'm standing in prayer for all of the sons and daughters. I'm praying for Chandra. I'm standing in prayer for Hannah. She's a beautiful young woman of God and God is going to anoint her and use her mightily in this final hour as she continues to yield herself to the Lord. I'm praying for um, Brittany. I'm praying for Abdiel. Such powerful young people of the Lord. Abdiel is a man of shalom and we just love having Abdiel on our prayer channel releasing the word and praying over us right so great things are coming to your sons to your daughters pastor merlin i'm standing in prayer for jason and for maria and for salvador that entire family is going to get baptized and they're going to come to the lord i see it i sense it i'm praying for them and it's going to happen i'm praying for nathan and becky and all of the children of the Capitol House of Prayer, the glory of God is going to shine on their life. I'm praying for Jason and Shanaza and all of the uh, Uchichi. I'm praying for Uchichi and all of the younger ones at the Mova House of Prayer. I'm standing in prayer for you, for your children. I can guarantee you, if you're in the prophetic ocean, your sons and daughters are also in the prophetic ocean. Sometimes it looks like they're not going to be in the prophetic ocean. But I just came on tonight to encourage someone to let you know your sons and your daughters, they are going to be in the prophetic ocean. Your nieces and your nephews, they are going to be in the prophetic ocean. If you're in the prophetic ocean, they are in the prophetic ocean also. Princess Tom, I'm praying for all of your sons. I'm praying for Kyle. I'm praying for uh, Karen. I'm praying for all of the other sons. I'm praying for... Um, uh, her name just passed up. Roseanne. Roseanne and Ashana. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for Dwight. I'm praying for Giselle. I'm praying for Tyrese. If you are in the prophetic ocean, all of your family members are going to be in the prophetic ocean. I know what I'm telling you. Pastor Cheryl, I'm praying for your sons and your daughters. I'm praying for Nika. I'm praying for Makeda. I'm praying for Mr. Logie. I'm praying for Willis and Sharice and the baby that we christened. Come on. 
Come on, saints of God. Get real. You are in the prophetic ocean. All of your children are going to be in the prophetic ocean. All of the people you love is going to be in the prophetic ocean. I know what I'm telling you. We, we're cutting off. We're, cu we're cutting off what we need to cut off, but we're bringing in what we need to bring in. Um, Barak Poor House of Prayer, I'm covering you and all of those lovely children in the Barak Poor House of Prayer, under John and Patricia, the nieces, the nephews, uh, uh, Jaylee and Jaron and uh, Neela, all of the family members in the Pro Barak Poor House of Prayer, I am praying for you. There's going to be a big baptism at your house as we continue to call in the souls i'm standing in the gap for you i'm standing in prayer for your spouses i'm standing in prayer i'm praying for new york house of prayer all of the family members in new york house of prayer uncle wade alaya uh, deborah and everyone else under the under the covering under the umbrella of the new york house of prayer sherry ann and sheldon and all of the family members that send their thanksgiving offerings on the altar, I'm covering you in prayer. And listen, kicking or screaming, you're going to be under the prophetic ocean. You're not coming out. I said you're not coming out. I am decreeing and declaring you and your household will be in under the covering of the prophetic ocean. Your seed is speaking on the altars. Your seed is in the courts of heaven speaking on your behalf. Your thanksgiving, your fruits, your baskets, all of the wine, all of the oils that you sent. It is on the courts of heaven. It is in the courtroom of heaven. And it is speaking on your behalf. You will have the victory. I decree and declare on your life. You will have the victory. You will have the victory. No devil in hell will be able to fight you in your own prophetic oceans. You will have the victory. Your life will be blessed. Your homes will be blessed. Your sons and your daughters will be blessed. Hey, I'm standing in prayer for Malcolm. I'm standing in prayer for Dexter. I'm standing in prayer for Pastor Kathleen and Brendan and Destiny, Shaliza and all the children. I know what I'm telling you. You will have the victory. All of your household will be saved. The prodigals are coming to their senses. The prodigals are coming to their senses. The prodigals are coming to their senses. The power of the altar of harvest and miracles will break the yokes off of their lives. And their life is going to shine for the glory of God. Prophetic promise number three, and that's going to bring us into a close. I'm, I'm bringing us in now. I'm bringing us in. I'm bringing us in. Prophetic promise number three. Prophetic promise number three. And this is what the Lord said. Now this particular promise is just for you. This is a personal promise from the Lord for you. You, the intercessor. You, the gatekeeper. You, the prophet of God. You, the homemaker, the, the wife, the midwife. This is your promise. Prophetic promise number three in your prophetic Goshen. I am giving you personal prosperity for your welfare and comfort. Write that down. Prophetic promise number three. I am giving you personal prosperity for welfare and comfort. Ooh. Personal prosperity for welfare and comfort. Why is it that the Lord desires to give you personal prosperity because a big portion of the covenant promise of the prophetic Goshen is comfort and plenty the prophetic Goshen represented for the children of Israel a place of comfort a place where they were able to eat their food in plenty there was no scarcity 
there was plenty for everyone there was enough food to eat there was enough beverages to drink there was an overflow there was blessing a pipeline of blessing was open and they were able to have comfort comfort listen some of you can get as spiritual as you want but you can never win me on this a hungry man is an angry man you can pray from now until tonight but if your husband goes out and he comes home and there is no food in that house to eat and nothing in the fridge to drink i'm telling you all your prayers will be wasted because he's going to behave like a madman a hungry man is an angry man so so there's no amount of spiritualizing spiritualizing what i'm saying now or trying to override it by being super spiritual or going into false humility comfort and welfare is very important to to the to a family comfort and welfare comfort and welfare if you are living in uh, louisiana ask minister parisia if there's a snowstorm and there, you have no heat in your house you can freeze to death you have no heat and you have no fireplace you can freeze to death you can pray from now until whenever but if you are in a snowstorm and you do not have heat in your house you will freeze to death why because comfort is a very important function in family life and so promise number three in your prophetic goshen is personal prosperity so this is what i wrote for you some of you were robbed of personal comforts over the past two years over the past two years the Lord was showing me how many people suffered and you lacked basic comforts. You lacked basic things to take care of your welfare. Well, the Lord would say to you on tonight that I am bringing you into a place of comfort and welfare. For the past two years, everything that was robbed from you or withheld from you, I'm about to bring it to pass. I'm about to release it into your life. I'm bringing you into a season of plenty. I'm bringing you into a season of double. I'm bringing you into a season of overflow. You, you are coming into a, a place of personal prosperity. Some of you that were out of jobs, you're about to receive jobs. Jobs is coming. The Lord is going to bless you with the means for making that income so that you will no longer have to lack. You're not going to lack, but you're going to live in plenty. You are moving from low to overflow, from barrenness to fruitfulness, from less than enough to more than enough. You're coming into a place of plenty, of abundance, of blessings, of overflow. Joel 2 and 26. Why don't I read that portion? Joel 2, 26, right? I want to show you something here. Joel 2 and 26. Joel. Here it is. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that has dwelt dealt wondrously with you and my people will never be ashamed again so you're about to eat in plenty who says that the people of God cannot eat in plenty who says that we should not be feasting I came on tonight as a covenant woman of God to let you know a covenant woman is a feasting woman I'm sorry but I love to cook my meals in large quantities and I love to spread out my table and have feast unto the Lord because a covenant people is a feasting people write that down you will eat in plenty Joel 2 and 26 your days of less than enough is over your days of scarcity is over your days of lack and limitation is over your days of fighting to feed yourself with one spoon of food is over you will eat in plenty that's the power of covenant you see you gotta understand covenant a covenant people is a feasting people a covenant people is harvest people a covenant people is abundance people listen some of you you, you you're waiting till you go to heaven to enjoy the feast of the Lord that's why they cannot touch the messianic people in the earth the messianic people in the earth we are 
feasting people because we understand the feast days of the Lord. Do you know what the feast days of the Lord represents? It's a divine appointment with Yeshua to receive blessings, but also to enter into joy and feasting, to enter into feasting. Feasting represents joy. That's why the feast days, the fall feast days are feast days of joy. It's prophetic days, prophetic appointments, more deems. It is more deems of joy, times of feasting, times of fellowship, times of refreshing. I want you to enter into times of fellowship fellowship enter into times of feasting i release grace on your life i release grace on your life grace for feasting grace for fellowship grace to eat in plenty covenant people are feasting people no one can take that away no one can take it away you can be upset a person can be upset but it's not going to stop my feasting i'm telling you what's my name world harvest i'm a harvest woman i walk under an open heaven and under this open heaven we are thanksgiving people we spread the table of the lord before our enemies and the lord prepares the table it is the lord that will prepare the table before you in this season it is the lord that puts the harvest on our tables i'm telling you covenant people are feasting people hey covenant people are feasting people every week we got a feast going on Every week we got a harvest going on. Every week we're eating and drinking and celebrating and rejoicing in the goodness of the Lord. Do you know why? That's my covenant right. That's my covenant right. As a son, as a daughter of God, that's your covenant right. I'm a covenant woman. And under this prophetic Goshen, I'm going to rejoice in my portion. I'm going to rejoice in the feast days. I'm going to celebrate the goodness of God in the land of the living. The psalmist David said, I would have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. I'm in my prophetic Goshen, and in my prophetic Goshen, I'm feasting and fellowshipping with Yeshua, enjoying the blessings of the Lord. And just in case anybody has an issue with feasting and enjoying the blessings of the Lord, when you get to heaven at the marriage supper of the Lamb, God the Father is going to have a table that is spread from here to the next side of the world set before you for the marriage supper of the Lamb. Every single son and daughter of God will be seated around the marriage supper of the Lamb to enjoy a feast of all feasts. So you better get ready. You better get ready for the marriage supper of the Lamb. I'm telling you, it's going to be the feast of all feasts. Who's coming to the marriage supper of the Lamb? Just declare, I will be at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Hey! And so, beloved, that's your prophecy. You are coming. The Lord is releasing to you personal pro prosperity. So I just release on your life personal prosperity. Personal prosperity for welfare and comfort. I decree and I release personal prosperity for soul upliftment. I release on your life personal prosperity for self-care and self-love. Where you treated yourself badly over the past year, you're about to make up to yourself for that. You're going to treat yourself with love. You're going to dress yourself with love. You're going to fix your hair and fix your face. You're going to enjoy the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Love yourself. Take care of yourself. All you got is one body and your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. You got to eat well, drink lots of water, take your vitamins take your supplements and come out to the feast days of the Lord and if you if you can't fellowship at home by yourself come down to world harvest we're a harvest house we're always celebrating something we've always got something to celebrate God's goodness about we're always in Thanksgiving we're always in rejoicing we're always in worshiping we're always celebrating we're always giving God the praise hey if you know where the Lord has brought me, you would understand why I give God the praise the way that I do. Personal prosperity. Receive personal prosperity. Receive personal prosperity. For welfare and comfort, soul upliftment, self-care and self-love, healing and wholeness. 
receive personal prosperity. Your money will no longer be acting funny in the prophetic Goshen. All things begin to flow towards you. All blessings begin to flow towards you now. All blessings flows towards you. All abundance flows towards you. All overflow flows towards you. I decree and declare on your life, the blessing of the Lord flows towards you. We're closing off. I'm giving you a declaration. I want to declare. I want to release God's decree over your life now. We're closing out with the power and the richness of the Holy Spirit. I'm releasing God's decree. You will eat the good of the land. I decree and declare on your life. Your sons and daughters, nieces and nephews will be saved. I decree and declare over your life. Your spouse will see the light of God. I decree and I declare over your life. Your bread basket will overflow to the brim with all kinds of bread. I decree and I declare on your life. Your body will be supernaturally healed. Receive healing on your body. I decree and I declare on your life. Financial breakthrough is your portion. Within the next seven, seven to 14 days, supernatural financial breakthrough is your portion. And I decree and I declare, your life will be a testimony unto God's goodness. Hallelujah. I seal this prophetic word in the blood of the Messiah and I call it done. That's your final declaration. Let's all decree and declare, my life will be a testimony of God's goodness. Amen and Amen. The Lord richly bless you everyone. Receive that blessing on your life. Shalom.